Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Matthew Miller. I am the Fedora project leader, and this is the Fedora Council video meeting. We try to do these about once a month, and uh, we have meetings more often than that. Usually they're on IRC, that's Internet Relay Chat, for those of you who are not old school internet hackers. Um, it is actually where a lot of Fedora work gets done, but we want to also do some of these high bandwidth things and also kind of make what we do more visible to the rest of the world in the community so we do some video calls um, and so we have Fedora Council people here and we also usually invite somebody to come and talk about something that they're doing in the project or um, something that's going on there. Um, I think our, our main agenda then this week is uh, Aoife Maloney is going to be presenting, did I get your name right there? Is that yeah, okay, awesome. Uh, presenting on um, Red Hat's uh, CPE team, that's uh, Community Platform Engineering. Um, and then uh, we'll see what other business we have at the end. I think maybe we want to talk a little bit about Fedora and coronavirus. So that, that'll, be, that'll be an exciting conversation. But we're going to give Aoife the bulk of the time here. Um, those of us who are familiar with Fedora probably know Red Hat puts a big investment in Fedora, but there is actually no Fedora team at Red Hat. I think pretty much all of us on this call who work for Red Hat work in different groups across the company. And uh, I think that's kind of a, a, a neat way for a company to invest in an open source project rather than just kind of having a dedicated, um, this is the few people who worry about that and everybody else that, you know, goes off and does business things. Uh, we try and have the whole company engaged in parts that make sense. Uh, but the CPE team is actually dedicated towards Fedora and CentOS community needs for infrastructure. And uh, Aoife is going to tell us a little bit about how that works. And we can ask her questions. And we'll just, uh, um, you may know her if you've been following mailing lists from weekly announcements about what's going on on the CPE team, but we wanted to bring some of that, like I said, to video to make it more visible to people. Um, so with that introduction, Aoife, would you like to go ahead? Thanks, Matthew. Um, and thank you for inviting me into this month's call. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you folks again. Um, I have met some of you in Brno in January. It was lovely to meet you there. And it's great to come back and continue to talk to you about how the CPE team is moving to a new way of work, a new way of working while still re retaining some of our uh, community roots at heart and our community values. Um, on how we are Trying to manage that, I have a couple of notes in an untitled draft. I didn't do a presentation. I wasn't sure if it was uh, presentation slides worthy or not. Um, but I am happy to go through my notes with you here today. And if you have any questions and feedback for me, if you have any ideas of how uh, how we can maybe fill some of the gaps, if there is any, or if you have any fair play to you lads, it's going well. We'd love to hear it. Good or bad, it's all usable. So I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. And the untitled document is literally Fedora Council CPE talking points. That sounds great. <laughs> OK, so can you let me know when you can see my screen? We've got it. Excellent. So the first thing that I'd like to talk to you today about is the work request trial policy. So we are trialing this policy. It is not It is not a, a, on the commandments list. It is something that we are having a look at and seeing and finding what way works best. Uh, some of it will work really good. Some of it won't and we'll have to, to drop and pivot and readdress. But at the moment, um, I have taken some of your feedback from the last time on board and trying to figure out a way to get our backlog prioritization more visible. Um, it was suggested to me in, within the team that your good selves use the uh, Tiger board for your project, so I've basically copied. No point in the reinventing the wheel. So there, I will share this document out with you as well. It is in a Google Doc, and I will transcribe it to a HackMD file as well, if that's easier for you all to access. Um, but I have been playing around with this Kanban board, which I think I should have it here. And here we can see some of our projects in our backlog. Uh, ones that we're looking at and ones that are in progress. Um, the numbers are irrelevant. It is literally just the number in which I put them on the board. It is not uh, reflective of their actual backlog priority. Uh, 
what is reflective of that is where they're positioned on the board. So in progress, we have sent us stream, the uh, fast replacement, and the data center move. There are three projects that are in progress. Um, Stenta Stream is at the moment at the forefront of the team's focus um, with the fast replacements second to it, but not lesser. Just hard to get two cards between. Um, we also have the data center move, which is also equally as important, but it's, uh, it's not taking up as many resources as the first two. We are also looking at an inbox upgrade for our Q2 planning, which I'll speak on in a moment, but that directly feeds into the CentOS stream and to a lesser extent, the, the fast replacement as well. In our backlog, we have identified the GitForge and DiskGit merge to be the most priority items at the moment, um, followed by the DNF backend metrics. And we have Fedora badges in there too. We have a couple of other uh, backlog items as well. We are The team would like to address the configura configuration management system. Um, we have Flatpak Fedora's uh, epic brief as well or requirements document knocking around in confluence i'd like to bring that out a little bit more we have a meteor replacement that we would like to address always guess for door i think has been worked on i just have to update it and the team are also looking at center ci and ci cd change log they're towards the end they are actually in motion but they're kind of they're just things that the team are, are touching base in and actively trying to resolve without it being on fire the idea cool. of this yeah. Any questions so far? I was going to ask what you may be already answering, which is kind of what is the size of a card on here? Like some of these things um, seem like they might be be um, like a, a one-off project, like an EEO re replacement. I can kind of see how that would go as basically an epic as a project, whereas CentOS Stream is basically an entire Linux distribution. Uh, uh, can you talk to about the granularity here a little bit and how that's decided and how that works? We actually haven't discussed uh, sizing yet. The team okay. are doing sizing per, yeah. It, it, we are really in the I, TV that's phase. Fair. Sorry, I wasn't trying to make a difficult no, question. No, that's okay. I'll, an, I'll answer as best I can and as honestly as, uh, and, and honestly. The, um, the team is very much in the, the teething phase of becoming more agile, and we do have an agile practitioner on the team that's helping us helping us progress through it. Uh, we are very much at the beginning phases of it, so everybody is aware of what it is, but we're now in the, oh, this is what it feels like kind of mode of it. Um, the, within these three projects, the team have... Take into notice. Within these three projects, the team are breaking down the tasks in sizes, but the actual projects themselves are not uh, translated into any points or sizes yet. They're just projects. Um, this I clicked on, so I'm going to have to change tack a little bit here, but I'll go back. The idea of this board here is that when you click on any project that you're interested in, it is a view only board. But if you see a project that you are interested in or have put forward for work and want to see, you know, some details about it, um, you have the project vision, you have the platform that it relates to, the estimated completion date the tech lead of the project and the product owner and some contact information to reach out as well. I would like to add more detail to it, but this is really a, a rough draft of this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? What do I need more of? What do you not want to see here? Um, and I will note down that T-shirt sizes or points or something to identify the sizing per project is, is needed. And that was actually discussed myself and Sarah were just talking about it earlier today. Um, she had suggested to break down the CentOS stream in phases. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. Let, let me see what the feedback is on it. So do you think that is something that you would prefer to see on the board? Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes it easier for me to understand what's going on when things are you know, roughly the same size, or at least you can kind of see the size of them, um, especially when there's something so huge as CentOS Stream, it makes makes it kind of hard to understand. It feels like that's going to just sit there at the top of in progress forever, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. probably isn't very very useful. So something that can you know you can see the progression through here. It's nice. Okay, thank you. That's a good point of feedback. I appreciate that. Oh, the this other is, question yeah. I have, which I guess kind of turned into a comment as I was thinking about it, is I was wondering why this wasn't on the um, teams.fedoraproject.org Taiga, but I guess if you have CentOS and Fedora stuff together, having it in a in a separate place, uh, makes sense. Um, if you want to use the Fedora one for CentOS yeah. stuff, I think you're completely welcome. We won't we won't mind. But if this is a good place for it, that's good too. As long as we can make sure we've got good links to it somewhere so people can find it. 
I I don't mind either way. I'm more than happy to copy paste it as much as Saigo will allow me over across to that. And um, I would I just wanted that visual for yourselves to understand this is my line of thought and to see if that matches what you would prefer to see. Um, yeah, um, in this public is, facing backlog. This is super helpful. Okay, so yes for the tiger board, maybe change the location. And more yeah, or make sure make sure it's easier for people to find. I don't really care about the URL that much. I just want to make sure that when people are looking for it, it's it uh, you know it doesn't feel like it's off on somebody's personal project page somewhere that they can't. Easily I think the CP item is an entry in Fedora Docs, so we can link it from there. I can help yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay. That Thanks, would be Adam. I appreciate awesome. That. Yep. Sounds and, good. Okay. And you. You can import into the Fedora instance from those instances as well. I know I had the IoT stuff migrated over to save you doing more work copying and pasting. Great, that sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate the help. I'll take you up on it anytime. Um, excellent. So great, that's good to hear that I'm on the right track for visibility purposes with the Teams projects. I appreciate that. I've taken some notes that you've given me and and, uh, and some constructive criticism. So I'll just jump back to the document today. So that covers the work request trial, and it is the larger projects that, that come into us. Uh, we are still looking at how to get the middle pieces. Uh, we're, we're not really any clearer on it, but maybe we might just run with a big one and a little one, and we'll see where the, the, little, the middle pieces fall. Um, I spoke to you already about the work channels. The project proposals would be super helpful in the epic brief. And you can mail it to me. It would be great if you could uh, bubble that up through. I know Marie sent me on one for badges, which is, is perfect. Maybe just like pick somebody to filter it up to me so I have a point of contact that's consistent. I'm more than happy to be that point of contact for you as well. So, um, uh, yep. Aoife, I think that these documents are probably only accessible to people at Red Hat, okay. um, and possibly the idea of Epic Brief is not familiar to people either. Um, can okay. you okay. can you talk about a little bit about what an Epic Brief is, and then I can Ooh. talk a little bit about how we as Fedora leadership can get these things to you at, in the yep. form that you like? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do that. So I might start then with the proposal process and then talk to you about the epic brief that you get to that. So the idea behind this is just to get uh, one form of communication, one, one point of contact from incoming work requests to the team so that they're not coming from 600 different places, that there's like one source of truth. And it's, it's not to block out any, any ideas or projects that people have, it's to centralize them so that we're not losing track of them and things aren't being half done. We would like to do something, one thing, and do it well, as opposed to five things and half-ass them. I'm sorry if I'm swearing on, on recording. But um, this is what we've kind of come up with as a team, and we're seeing how it works. And as I said earlier, it's all trial basis. We are not putting this in stone. We can pivot when we feel we need to, and when it's obviously apparent we have to. So the proposal would be super helpful if it was filled in an epic brief, which I'll come back to. You fill out your details and you send it to me. We then take the proposal and we review. That's ambitious, but we will review as we receive and then come back to the requester with some more information. We will solicit requirements from them and we will discuss with the tech leads and the CPE management team. Have we people to put on this project? What is the technical implementation? What, should, what approach should we take for it? And then based on a scoping from within the team, we would come back to the, the external requester with what we think we can do, if that matches what they would like, if that meets their requirements, and then start moving the project. Similarly, if something comes in, and it's just worth calling out that if we don't have the capacity for we would like to communicate that out equally as well. But if we, we don't have the people, or we don't have the resources, we have a reason for you as to why the project can't be done at this time or ever. Uh, but we would we would like to take as much work and be as accountable as, as we possibly can do without burning people out. All right, so cool. that is the process. Cool. The epic brief, I may as well just keep going now while I'm on a roll. Um, right, go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> if you would like to request work, you follow that process and you complete this epic brief. 
you need to have a name, you need to pop your name on it, the date it was submitted, and the dependency dates of your project. So if you know that there's, it will take, it will take the, the, the fast replacement as an example, just if it came out of nowhere. Um, there's a dependency date on that of November, I believe, this year. It, it has to be done before then. Um, so you would have the dependency dates of November 2020 there. The summary overview would be that it is a replacement of the current solution that's EOL in November 2020 because of X, Y, and Z. What platform does this relate to? Fedora. If it relates to both, just take both. Uh, is this something new? Is it an enhancement or a replacement? So brand new item, uh, an enhancement, not really, but it would be a replacement to the current system. Is there a workaround in place in the case of FAS? No, there's not. Once that deadline comes, we need to have something there. And what does it relate to? Is it an initiative? Is it something new? Infrastructure or RELENG? It would be great if you know, if we know why it's important to you, why it benefits everybody for doing it. And then what happens if, if unfortunately we can't do that? And if you have some objectives and goals that you would like your, your project proposal to reach, document them. And then this may be the most important is that why, what does success look like to you? So if you were requesting the replacement to the account system, like how would you know if it's done? How would you get that and go, yep, that's exactly what I want. So it's important to really be very, very clear as to what's important, why you want something, what, what it means to you, and what does it look like when it's done to you. That's all you need to do for the epic brief stage. It comes to me. I set some time together in the calendar and we go through the requirements of the project to make it successful. We examine what the dependencies are, if there's internal dependencies, if there's external ones. Um, I need to clarify the internal, the external, whether it's internal to Red Hat and external as in community, or if it's internal to Fedora and external that it could have, a, have some uh, bearing on CentOS infrastructure. And a couple of risks. So that is our epic brief in a nutshell. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, try to pull back the Red Hat curtain a little bit here and kind of explain how this connects into what happens in um, the structure for how things get done at Red Hat and how um, this relates to Fedora as a project. Um, in general, in RHEL development, we have things called subsystem teams, and those are um, responsible for something like, uh, you know, the compiler team, the tools team, or uh, networking or virtualization and these kind of big areas of of the distribution for RHEL. And uh, those, each of those teams has something called a product owner. And so the product owner is basically uh, what Aoife is doing for the CPE team. It's kind of the, the team member who's responsible for getting these requirements in. And those requirements come from uh, a product manager on the uh, product management side of the organization, uh, what Red Hat calls the business unit. And, um, that's where these features and uh, epic briefs come from, from the RHEL platform side. Um, obviously, um, th things are a little different in, in Fedora. For one thing, there is no product management. Um, for another, uh, this isn't quite like a subsystem team, and a lot of the things here are infrastructure related rather than being um, Fedora like uh, distro features that are being developed. Uh, so um, our friend Brian Exelbeard, Bex, our former F-Cake, is actually now in a role where he is serving for community projects as kind of the stand-in for a product manager, whatever. I'm not sure what the actual title is, but basically he is kind of in that role. So Brian is the owner of these feature uh, requests, these epic briefs um, from, from that perspective. Uh, so um, this template is an internal document, and I don't know if we um, if we necessarily need to have that exact thing in in the community. Um, I expect that the way that will work is these uh, things that are epic briefs will come from the Fedora Council, probably mostly from objective leads, and and um, then we'll work with um, Fedora Council and with you know me, Marie, ben, and people in Fedora leadership to make sure that um, things that Red Hat can do are communicated to Red Hat in, in, in this format here. Um, and I think that will work. Um, I don't know, it, it's helpful, I think, for people who are working on those things to be aware of what the Epic Brief 
format looks like and what's being asked for. But I don't think community members are going to necessarily need to fill out these exact this exact paperwork um, in this way because we'll kind of have um, some red headers to help work and get that into the right shape. Does that make sense, Aoife, to you? And does that make sense to everyone else as well? It certainly makes sense to me. Um, I like. I'm not. I don't mind what way you would like to bubble up your priorities and your um, your projects to us too. That I'm more than happy to work with you and be aware of your own structure. This is what we are trying to put around our team to just make it a little bit more easier for us to get through the work. Um, but I'm more than happy to. If if you prefer a different format, just loop me in so I know where to look for these things. And if you could then use the epic brief for any, for the, the big ticket items that you really want to push forward, uh, that would be really helpful for me because it's in a really clear document that I can push through to the team and to the CP management and through Bex then as well to the father in Red Hat or elsewhere that would need some extra extra work. It's just putting documentation in place as a fallback. We have the yeah. data. This is what we need. I think this makes sense to me. Does anybody else have a comment on this? I know we've got a lot of people on the call here. It seems right to me, like we would do the translation of those kinds of requests and fill out the paperwork. I think that's fine. I'm curious, do we have a, someone from outside of Red Hat? How, do, how does this look to you? I'm not outside of Red Hat, uh, but I was wondering if we could maybe use Taiga for, for this epic brief submissions instead of using a template in a document and then email it to, to a one person, basically. Maybe if, if the Taiga instance was open for anybody to submit, submit ideas, that might work better and be more scalable. Uh, Justin Flory said in the comments that uh, even if I'm not someone filling out the epics, I follow this and the context is helpful. And gives a plus one to thinking on feedback curation from the community. Uh, so one thing, uh, we actually have our own Fedora Council um, Taiga board that Ben runs. And I think, um, as I'm thinking about it right now, and this is open to change, I think maybe the best thing for us to do is to run those community input ideas through there and progress them through that. Um, ben has dropped a link in the chat here. I'm not sure if that will show up in the video. We'll try to make sure and get that transcripts. It's on the um, Fedora Council project on teams, fedoraproject.org. Um, I think if we bubble up our community things through there and then we can, what the ones, some, somewhere on there, there's a phase basically for get this into the CP template form and we can make sure that that happens. I think that will kind of give the CP team the format they're looking for and kind of follow the same process as other internal Red Hat teams kind of give that interface. Yeah, I just put a comment in that if if you're using your Tiger board to, to capture the community items that come into you as Council to Action, I'm more than happy to have that board bookmarked and keep an eye on it. Ping me if you have something gone in there and we can I can work with the Council member or back, so whoever you'd like to direct that request to, to transpose the, that item, those items into epic briefs then for us to follow the formal process that we're putting around our team. We're not trying to put that process around you as the community, but we would like to follow it for our team for our own clarity. And I'm that middle yeah. person there that I'm, I'm happy to, to take the outside and bring it in and then bring the inside back out. Awesome, uh, thank you Aoife. I feel like there should be more appreciation in the world for people who do that being the middle person work because Story it takes so much effort. Oh my God, it, it takes so much effort to do that. And it is such a relief when you're working on something to have somebody else say, I, I got this, I can I can help make connect those things. So uh, thank you for being one of those, those people. That's amazing. Um, Happy to help, it benefits us all, so why not? Um, I don't have too much more notes to, to get through, but if you want to just skim through them super quick, our next quarterly planning for CPE team is 18th of March. Uh, I forgot the other ones, but I actually think it's on this document here for the Q3, Q4 dates. 
Um, we are looking at the following stakeholders to, uh, to give some input on our next, on, on the projects that we're next looking toward. Um, so as you pointed out, Matthew Bex is, going, is our liaison point person for both business and community at the moment. Um, hopefully ever, I like Bex. The CPE management team uh, are also named as stakeholders just so that they can contribute to uh, capacity of the teams. They know their own staff, they know what they're working on, what they want to upskill to, and it's valuable for me to know that we have a um, Centre CI uh, project coming up and somebody from the Fedora community that works on the CP team has really expressed a strong want to learn about that. So from a management perspective, it's helpful to know that would be a great person to jump on here. That's an upskilling opportunity. That's somebody to learn some other skills. So we feel that it's important for them to, to have that say. Uh, both for them and their own staff. Zara, our Agile practitioner, is also helping me as well. Um, she's great to structure and schedule the, the team's capacity for the actual work in progress stuff that when the projects come in that we can break them down into more granular tasks. She's going to be helping me on my type board too, so that would be good. And our team leads for technical implementation so they can start thinking about any projects that come in, how we are actually going to move that um, technically speaking. And I had put down a note that to make sure to ask for feedback on additional support and to fill in the gaps if, if we do have any, but you've been pretty proactive on that too, so I appreciate it. Any other things that we need to consider? Um, yeah, actually, can we talk about the sustaining team and the workflow for that kind of a little bit? Because I don't think that got covered yeah. at all, and I think that'll be actually pretty important to a lot of the people listening who um, we, we do have a lot of these big epic ideas, but also a lot of work in Fedora is kind of ongoing, smaller things, smaller requests, daily things, details. Um, and I think that's probably actually, uh, not that we, what we just talked about isn't incredibly important, but I think the majority yeah. of people's interface with the CPE team will be through that. So let's make sure we get that covered. Absolutely. I just wanted to give you some context on this is what, we're, what we do during these um, during this quarterly planning. But bear in mind, our next one next week is only going to be our like second jumping, one. <laughs> jump, jumping, no, it's okay. jumping way ahead. Okay, go <laughs> no, on, no. we'll come back to that. It's a good thing it's recorded, so we can all go back and go, oh yeah, I said that there. Um, the the uh, quarterly planning is also going to be recorded as well, so I should check. I don't see it being an issue as to why we can't um, send it outside as well for more visibility on it, but certainly what is discussed and decided upon will be communicated out. Um, I have a couple of details for the Cola Move AAA, and then I'll get to the sustaining team. Uh, Cola Move dates are being finalised with the team today, and I'll publish another note on HackMD. It'll be linked in the weekly mail. Uh, AAA so, fast. Wait, let, yeah. me, let me interrupt and explain that. Uh, if people haven't been following, uh, Red Hat is moving data centres from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, to I I don't know where, somewhere else, somewhere in Raleigh. Washington. Oh, Washington. Okay. Um, yeah, and Arden, also rally. RDU2 and, uh, yeah, so um, this is very painful for us, and we're going to see the pain coming up with some reduced capacity in uh, Fedora infrastructure for a while as this move happens. Um, but the good news is that we will have um, more capacity, more space, better hardware. Um, this will be a big improvement, um, so good. Uh, and the other thing to note is, um, you know, Red Hat provides that space to Fedora, and when Red Hat said we don't have that space anymore, it's not like we can say no. So um, this is not on our schedule. This is not something we wanted to do, but um, we are making the best what, of it, and CP team is making the best of it. What What's the main window for the move, may I ask? Yeah, sure. Like when's, we'll start... when's, when's, when's the main interruptions going to be, essentially? So we are starting a shipment, our shipment out from um, April 13th. I think that's the Monday. You shouldn't see too much massive interruption there. Um, Community shifts will have some downtime from probably from the 6th of April to in around the 1st of May. So there's probably going to be a three week window where community shifts will, uh, will either be offline or will be elsewhere. Um, I have a two-hour call today with the team to discuss that and see where we're, what we're going to do. So that's why I haven't linked anything here to that yet. Um, you should have a more a published schedule by the end of the week. But we are very mindful of um, 
the Dora 32 release schedule, and we've purposely been structuring the hardware moves to uh, to make sure that there's enough time for consumption and for releases in or around the the April mark where you'd like to release Dora 32. So. Um. Yep. Ben points out in the comments here that uh, this is actually on the Fedora 33 schedule under the infrastructure um, category. All, a lot of the dates are already planned out here, so it's in the schedule map. So if you go to the normal Fedora 33 schedule page, you can find these dates here. The main ones are community shifts from around the 6th of April to the 1st of May is going to be a little problematic. And then um, we're going to be swapping to a slimline version of Fedora from May 20th to July 1st. So there'll be a six week window where we will have very limited services running through Fedora infrastructure. Uh, we hope that it will be enough time for downloads and um, and the release timing for Fedora 32 between uh, March in those, uh, not March, sorry, in, when are you April. releasing it? Is it the 28th of April, 21st? Somewhere between those the two. The 21st <laughs> is the preferred target. <laughs> um, so we've we've had a look and we've allowed about a three to four four week optimistic three week kind of minimum window um, to get Fedora 32 out and and consumed and then we will reduce the service to allow for the larger hardware shipment. Uh, that shipment is going from Northern Virginia to Washington. The first bit of the move with, that relates to community shifts that that would be the Fedora Cloud racks and um, they are being shipped to RDU to. Um, and that will be uh, April. So April and June are your two months that you'll find a little bit of less service. But Ben, thank you for posting the link in the chat. As I said, I will have a, more, a detailed schedule published on HackMD once it's been finalized with the team, uh, once we're comfortable that we can meet those targets and, and change them. But it's worth pointing out as well that Things happen, so dates may change for both the good and the bad. And please bear with us while we're facilitating this move. And let's all say a prayer that it will never happen again. But <laughs> chance would be a fine thing. Be permanent and eternal data center for Fedora. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just build our own. Um, so yeah. the AAA, the, the FAST update is, um, it's still well, the same. Can I, team. Yeah, sure. Can I, can I interrupt real quick? I wanted, there's one thing I wanted to point out. Uh, for the data center move is that you know the attempt is to try and make it as invisible as possible to the Fedora users. Um, so you know it'll be mostly affected uh, affecting contributors and just things being slower there. But we want to try and make make sure our users still have a good experience. In concrete terms, fewer builders is going to be a big thing. So uh, we'll try not to schedule a mass rebuild while the builders are not available, for example. But there will be still build capacity and to some degree. That is my understanding. And also for all architectures, Peter. Right, Aoife? I think so. There, ha find it. There, has to, there has to be all architectures because otherwise the builds just block and we, it's an all or nothing thing. So Yeah. The, the people planning this are uh, infrastructure team members we're all familiar with from long yeah, time in Fedora, so I'm confident they've got it. I, I figured as much, which is explicitly why I did not ask the question around all architectures. Now, there, there, will, there will be some limitations, but um, the, the core pieces, uh, we're going to re retain them. There was a note sent out a long time ago from Kevin Penzi, who's uh, the main team lead on this, working with me and Stephen Smoogin, about what you can expect from the minimum viable Fedora solution that we're going to put in place and what also you cannot expect. I'm trying to dig it out of the archives somewhere. I will find it eventually and send it on to you, but it's been referenced half a dozen times as well. Yeah, um, I, so I remember that reading content. that some time ago. I, I remember reading that some time ago and not being particularly concerned um, about anything in particular there. So from my point of view, it all seems fine. And having done data center moves myself before, I know how stressful this is. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, I found the link, Peter, so I have it popped into the chat for you as well. But uh, that's what we're aiming for. Uh, Kevin has been actually looking through that and getting a proof of concept together. So that's what we're addressing this evening. And 
once we have once we have that nailed down, once we have those dates confirmed, um, I will push that out into the open, put it on a billboard if I can, just so people are fully aware, so that when that time does come, they're not we're not all caught in the headlights. Um, the AAA replacement is is going fine. There, the team are still working through um, the two-factor authentication with the free IPA API and the fast JSON API this week. Our work is in the public in GitHub. The link is there. And I will share this document to you so you have access to all those links. And for the main event, the sustaining team. So uh, Kamal Verna is leading that team, and he, with them, have identified the main repos that they are maintaining. Here it is. Second D. I love this thing. So this is what they are looking at and actively going to maintain. And this will address the the small fixes, upgrades, low-level stuff that doesn't require a big epic brief and a process, but still needs attention. And we would like anything like that to just hit the tickets in the, in the usual way. We're not changing that process. Um, we are sharing this out just so people are aware that if you're filing issues and bugs and fixes, um, these are what we're going to be looking at and addressing. Anything outside of this list may get missed. I will happily share this on with you. Does that make things a bit clearer to you as the council and the wider community as to how we're addressing that kind of work? Yes, and this is the um, existing um, Fedora infrastructure and Pagger um, at Relinj uh, queues on Pagger for making these requests. Is that? Uh, there's a lot of trackers yeah. here. The team follows all of the different trackers, or is there one place we should focus things? They're trying to, and they're still working through it as well. The team has really only come together in the last few months, and they've spent a great deal of that time identifying the places where people do file issues and bugs and, and things, and they've made a tracker for the trackers. <laughs> but we are looking to centralize that and make that more clearer. Okay. And they have also been working on how they would actually like to work. Again. Another document, but um, the links are there. So they've de they've decided to uh, have a mission statement and what their day to day would look like. And this is hugely in, in thanks to our agile practitioner who's coaching us in in working in a more in a better way. They have organised themselves into two teams. Uh, one team is going to be purely dealing with the fires that crop up, the bugs, the unplanned work, things that really need a quick fix. And team B are going to look at more um, longer term underneath the hood that nobody ever sees, but you still need it to get the engine running and clearing up the technical debt, um, the, the nice stuff that nobody ever sees, but still there. So this, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. F fun team and hard, hard work plumbing team. Is that the exactly? I, I hope people get to rotate between teams at point. Uh -huh. Yes, they do. Yeah, that was, um. That was identified as as a need both for both for their own mental health and um, and it's a great upskilling opportunity. Like if you find yourself either joining this team or have been in it in a while, now there's a great opportunity to to learn new things and and meet more people and work with people a little bit more directly than we may have been working in the past. So are the Kanban and Scrum boards for these teams um, internal or are they public boards? I believe they're public. Um, team A, the, the firefighting team, have IRC meetings, and it's listed here. They have a backlog somewhere. I, I'll have to uh, I'll have to tag that in. Um, but they review the tickets that are in their board, and they assign tickets, and they they get working basically. And the team B workflow. They are still working through it. Okay. They're going to be a little bit more formal. I think they all join the uh, IRC meetings and kind of divvy up what looks like an immediate TNA attention and something that can probably go into a little bit of a longer, uh, a longer sprint or queue that Team B will pick up. Yeah. Uh, uh, a we... good example of that is, is Pingo's um, proof of concept. That would fall into the Team B side of things because this is a, an idea that they're looking at for longer term benefit. I don't know how many people are all familiar with Agile terminology by now, but um, Kanban basically is a, a system like these Taiga boards we've been looking at where kind of cards 
come in on the one side and progress across them in kind of a continuous flow, whereas Scrum is the thing you may have heard of with sprints and kind of a I'll kind of focus on start and end ceremonies and kind of um, the team takes work at the beginning um, and then from the point of view of stakeholders, um, that's that's the uh, granularity um, is is the size of the team Scrum and what the team does internally. There's their own business. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that working on an open source project because um, you know it, it's it tends to be something that works really well on a kind of a tightly knit team working all very closely on the same you know, same same time zone same same work together. So I'm uh, kind of interested in how uh, this team develops that because it's kind of neat to see agile processes develop as they work in the real world. Yeah, and there's every chance that we could end up doing some sort of a weird hybrid called Scrum Ban. Yes, <laughs> <So> right. <laughs> it's, it's totally open. We're, we're just going to see what works, see what sticks. Yeah, uh, that's cool. And I think that's going to be good for the team and um, really good for getting a lot of um, productivity and reduce burnout and so on in, in that team. So I'm glad to see this. Uh, the, that, so that is the, the sustaining team workflow, and I will take two seconds of your time and give you back 15 for important council stuff that I'm so sorry I've spoken to for 40 minutes out. Oh. Uh, the Git Forge, no. thank you. Oh, yeah. yes. Let's ask about the Git Forge. I don't think we need answers here, but what are the, this obviously was a pretty big discussion on the Fedora Develop List with a lot of passion. We tried to capture that as much as we could um, and give our community feedback to you. What are the next steps there? What are the timelines? And who is making what decisions? Um, so as you can see, I have four sentences on the update. <laughs> um, I, and one of them is thanking you for the contribution. Yes, there was. There was loads of, um, of user stories that came in and, and requirements. And thank you so much for your time in, in going through them and pulling them together in, in user story format for me. That, that has been hugely helpful. Uh, as we stand now, so we sent out the requests for requirements out in externally. Uh, we've got them, and now it's time to bring them back in-house and review the software as a solution offering, and also can like to develop out Pagger a bit more. So we're now in the comparison site uh, stage. That is going to be done with the CP management team and the uh, and the tech leads, and also. I would imagine Bex as the liaison point person between community and business. Um, we're examining what service meets the majority, if all of the requirements, and then based on scalability and future growth and business continuity, both as a community business and as an actual business business, um, to see what make, meets the needs and what is the best choice for everybody to move toward. We are right. going to be addressing that in the um, the quarterly planning next week. Okay, and so that's user stories we publish next week, or um, yeah. and and so when can we expect outcome from that? Probably at the end of the month. So what we okay. where are we next week? Our quarterly planning is the 18th. So I would imagine we would have an output or a decision reached, hopefully by the end of next week, but it it may spin into uh, the week after. Um, we, we now would have to communicate to all stakeholders who sent in their requirements, this is what we're thinking, what do you think? <laughs> so it's a lot okay. of, I like what you've done here, and readdress it. There was, we compiled 63 user stories in total. Um, it was comforting to see that a lot of the, the requirements from, uh, from CentOS, from Fedora, from RHEL actually overlapped and could be amalgamated into the same user story. So that was, that was nice to see, kind of made a big task a little bit easier, um, but the, there were 63 in total usable user stories, and I'm going to be publishing them early next week. It's not a decision. It just wants you to, I just want you to be aware of this is what came back to us, and this is what we can run with. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you all for your help with it. it it's, it's a big one. And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this was really helpful and useful to me. I hopefully to other people as well. Um, anyone else have more questions for Eva? No, just a big thank you. That was very useful. Thank Don't you, hesitate Tom. to.
You're very welcome, guys. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'll pop in my contact details in the chat. I'm more than happy to talk, learn more, work closer with you. Happy to do that. Great. Um, we are very happy to have you in the Fedora community working with us on this. So, thank you. Okay. Um, next topic. Um, I think we need to talk about COVID-19 a little bit and Fedora and the coronavirus. Um, obviously, um, things are escalating. Everything in Massachusetts is closing down, including Harvard University, which is kind of shocking. Um, you know, we, we, we don't close for blizzards, so this is um, a, a big deal. Um, I, I'm joking a little bit because what can you do? But it's also very serious. You see the news coming out of Italy and everywhere else around the world where I know we've got a lot of Fedora contributors that I'm concerned about the health of, and I hope everybody and everybody's family is doing well. Um, I just want to talk about, you know, our events and things and, um, you know, uh, block coming up and what, what, what we as Fedora Council should be doing and saying about this at this point, and do she give guidance to Mindshare about events and what, um, all of that. I suppose the biggest uh, question I have is, when do we have to make a decision about Flock, or has that already been made? Marie, no. do you? No. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Um, yeah. We've so we've gotten to a point where we have put a deposit down on an event space. Um, that there's some things in the contract to be able to, you know, get some or some of the money back. Um, but that deposit, the first initial deposit, has been made. I plan to put this decision, or at least get input from Red Hat and how they want us to proceed with it. Because they have a lot of people who are focused on events and um, evaluating those. I don't find myself particularly qualified to make a call like that, especially this far in advance. Although I do think that generally Red Hat is risk averse. So the answer might be that it's canceled. but uh i'm not that's not official news <laughs> please please don't take it that way um it's still a work in progress and the question of when do we need to exactly know by is a good one and i'm gonna find out yeah um from what i've seen a lot of a lot of you know events around the size of flock are um, canceling now and moving to july and august um so it is possible you know it's very hard to predict especially the future um this this could go in a lot of different ways um and it may be that by um by august you know travel restrictions are down um it may be that they're a lot more severe so i think um yeah uh, letting the experts make the call is probably the right thing to do for flock so we don't have news yet is right um i guess i'm right now i'm kind of more thinking about like the meetups and things that we sponsor through Mindshare and whether we should officially put a hold on those. Um, Red Hat just announced a thing that basically said, uh, if you were having a meetup of a, you know, above 100 people, do not do that. If you're having something below 100 people, um, the wording was a little bit different, but it was um, you should postpone or make that virtual. Still, still pretty strong on Probably those. Probably kind of not do that. Yeah, um, and especially when we're talking about you know travel outside of your area in particular um, is uh, strongly disrecommended. That's not the words either, but um, and I think we should probably um, extend that to Fedora events. Um, I don't want to flip out, but like I said, you know the news from Italy is pretty bad, and um, these are places where there are. And you know China as well, where there's pretty developed healthcare systems, are having a hard time. Um, we have a lot of Fedora and a lot of Fedora events in areas that are, you know, um, maybe not at that level and are going to probably be hit worse. Um, so, uh, well, you know, and then we have countries you, like the U.S. where we don't. You're, know, uh, you're right. Testing. I was going to say the United States. Um, 
may fall under that because we we don't know. Well, I mean, it's a big uncertain uh, thing. So, um, yeah, um, I, I think. So I think my thought is we probably shouldn't sponsor any events at least for like the next three months. And then I think ascending. I think the next question is, do we, you know, fund people to go places? I think the answer is also no. That's kind of matches what I'm thinking as well. So yeah, I'm plus one to that. Um, yeah, I think have... we can. I think we can safely say that for like the next three months. And if it's outside of that, I think we can, like, look at each case. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think we should just do events. Do what, that have already been rolling. Let's try that one at a time. Um, do we have any existing events that are already funded for the next three months? That's a and great so, question. How should we handle that? I'm writing that one down. <laughs> All right. Well, the answer is we'll find out. Uh, I think it makes perfect sense to have a rolling decision on this as things evolve. Um, so two questions for me are, when do we need to know for flock if we're going to cancel or keep it kind of a thing, or what, when, when would that make sense to make that decision? And um, do we have events that are already funded? And we're going to do some rolling decision making on events moving forward. Uh, I guess the good news is that people in Fedora are well familiar with um, collaborating remotely and working from home and using video conferencing to get things done. So um, hopefully things will mostly be business as usual for us, um, and hopefully we can you know share some of our expertise in you know, working this way with our other coworkers and people who don't. Right. We are doing a good amount of, you know, brainstorming around Red Hat Summit. So I don't know, maybe we can use some of those same things if we want to do some virtual events, at least the same concepts. Um, I think if Flock does get canceled, then there's a bigger conversation there because that's a huge component for contributors <clears throat> uh, over the year to kind of give them energy for the next year. So. Right. We, that, yeah. Let's have a conversation when it comes, yeah. but but yeah, I just I, I don't think that just canceling it is the best thing to do. I think we would have to do, or I would like to do something. I don't think we would yeah. just call it like a virtual flock, but I don't know. Right. It's just to me. Thought. To me, um, we do the thing that most people think of as a virtual conference continually at Fedora. Like Fedora is an ongoing virtual conference. That's kind of what we are. Um, so having a virtual flock, I mean, the whole point of flock is that it is not virtual. It gets us together. So we can't really have, I, I agree, we can't have a thing that's virtual flock. But on the other hand, doing what we can to do a celebration of the community, um, it, even without that, seems like a good thing. But you're right. Let's, let's wait till it gets to where we need to do that. All right, um, Peter, you said you had to go halfway through, but you're still here. I'm glad we held your attention. Um, anything uh, else? No, the, the, the person <laughs> that I was meeting with canceled, um, you know. All right, um, anybody have anything else for the last five minutes of the meeting here? All right, yeah, I was, um, oh, go ahead. I just want to do a quick reminder that um, you know, we're open to suggestion. I just dropped the link in the chat. I'll drop it in the council IRC channel. But if there are things that you want to have uh, as part of this monthly video series, add it to the wish list on the wiki so that we can try and get that scheduled. Um, I've updated it to include TBD for the next three months, but I already have some ideas in mind. I just need to um, you know, coordinate with those people and get those on the list. Yeah. Awesome. And I think technically this worked very well. I We've been trying to use Jitsi, an open source video solution that we are very fond of in theory, um, but it was not actually being able to sustain a whole conversation with all of these people. So 
um, Blue Jeans it is. Thank you, Blue Jeans. Um, and I'm going to try and get this up on Fedora uh, YouTube channels and things after this meeting. Um, figure that out. Bye, everybody.